today. Twitter is making history as the first social media platform to be owned by an African-American. We applaud their diversity and their inclusion. Uh, wait, hold on. I think I hear the left's heads exploding. Yeah, I do. And it's a great day. Happy Monday. We've got that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and today I am joined by both Blaze TV contributors Eric July, host of For Cannon's Sake, and John Doyle, host of Heck Off Commie, who I would like to point out, it is actually a very, very big day for John Doyle himself because he is banned from Twitter as of right now. It's going to change. It is going to change, and you're right. This is literally the biggest day of my life, probably, <laughs> up until uh, my Twitter account gets back. As someone who's been serially addicted to Twitter since he was 14, and then that was robbed of him about 18 months ago, for this to come back is just is really special, I think. So everyone's talking about Donald Trump being brought back to the platform, but the real story is, of course, John Doyle. Well... Unironically, if you like name search John Doyle on Twitter, which I do, uh, <laughs> you can, you got I believe this. No, seriously, that's how I keep up with the journalists and what they. Right. You see, like a lot of people saying um, in replies to, you know, who are you most excited to see back on Twitter? My name is in there with, you know, your Donald Trumps and your your so and so. So, yeah, I was I was a pretty good account. There you go. Opinion. You heard it here first. John Doyle's account should be coming back to Twitter. Uh, so Twitter. Twitter's board has accepted uh, the offer from Elon Musk to buy the company and take it private. Uh, it has entered into a definitive agreement to be acquired by an entity wholly owned by Elon Musk for fifty-four twenty per share in cash in a transaction valued at approximately just a cool $44 billion uh, upon completion of this transaction. Of course, Twitter will officially be a private company. Um, now, it's interesting it's just, well, honestly, let's let, okay. So let's take a step back here and think about how much this whole deal has evolved since the beginning. So Elon Musk first uh, purchased a bunch of shares and became the largest uh, stakeholder in the company. Then was going to join the board, remember? And then the board uh, that that whole thing fell apart because then Elon Musk found out, I guess, that he couldn't buy more shares and said, never mind, I'm not going to join the board. But then what was it? Vanguard came out and bought up a bunch of shares and then they became the largest stakeholder. And Twitter's board was like, no, we're not going to do this. And then somewhere in between all of that mix, as that was shaking out, uh, they Twitter's board had a change of heart. Um, have you guys, do you guys have any theories about why that happened? I just think it's money. I mean, to me, it's just they. He gave them an offer that they couldn't refuse. They realized they he, just he could overpaid not, on it. You yeah. literally can't. Definitely, the shareholders wouldn't have been happy if the board had refused right. it as well. Like he gave them an offer. Everybody has everything to benefit from that, unless which we'll probably talk about here in a little bit. Unless you're talking about narrative control. But aside from that, when you look at that dollar amount. Twitter's not worth that. It's not worth anything close to that. So, yeah, if you wanted to get get your, get your money's worth, you got to take that deal. Mm -hmm. You just absolutely have to. Because they have a like a, a financial, a fiduciary responsibility yeah. to their shareholders to do what's in the best interest of their stock. Yeah. That's it. That's all you. I'm just, this is really just a great moment, I think, for <laughs> humankind. You know, as you know, and as I often get made fun of for, I often enjoy almost becoming fanatical about certain figures in like American public life. Mm -hmm. You know, after Trump killed, uh, I think the second most powerful Iranian military general, or remember the Soleimani or yes. something. The Iranian government had a, a bit of a jab at America, which I think was actually true. They said something like, oh, well, you know, how are we supposed to retaliate when America doesn't have any heroes? You know, who are we going to kill, SpongeBob or, or Spider-Man? And I think that's true. And so I really look at someone like Elon Musk, and I've been an Elon fan since, like, 2017. You know, I have the Tesla sticker on my laptop and all my videos. Everyone always makes fun of me for it. But he really vindicates, uh, I think, the greatest man theory of history, which is that throughout history there are these men who are destined to change, you know, centuries' worth of historical trajectory. And I like to think that's a guy like Elon Musk. You know, he just uses his wealth and his intellect to just kind of 
throw it around and, you know, oh, I think I want to go to Mars. Oh, I think I want to see if I can solve traffic. Oh, I think I want to see if I can, you know, fix free speech. And I think that this is good. So I'm excited about it. Well, and it is interesting that you say that because as we've discussed on the program, Elon Musk is not, he is not a conservative, guys. He is not, I don't, he has not been red-pilled. He is not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination. Don't you dare say he has been. And he is so red pill. No. You can tell no. you can tell a lot about a man by the types of memes that he posts. Elon Musk mm. posts memes calling leftist NPCs, calling the opposition I NPCs. Just, I but but there is so much that he would still disagree with conservatives on. Like what? Uh, climate change for starters. Yeah. Transhumanism. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these, are, these are kind of big issues. I, I don't think that he's necessarily a conservative, <laughs> but I think that he's at least sympathetic to the people in society who are being yes. persecuted, which are conservatives. And it's like, this is just a huge deal that the most powerful man in the world in terms of, uh, well, that we know of money on paper is willing to advocate on behalf of free speech, but only because he knows, but he won't say it, but he knows the people who are being targeted are people who mm -hmm. are right wing. And I think that that's very good. And he's smart enough, I think, to paint it in the language of the, the regime, you know, democracy and free speech. He knows what he's doing, I think. You can tell by the memes he posts, he's winking at us, and I think he's our guy, even if he wants to, you know, put chips in our brains. Or whatever. We'll, we'll cross that bridge <laughs> when we get to it. For the time being, as long as I can post on Twitter again, I'll be happy. Well, I think, too, um, to your point, John, I think it really doesn't matter all that much at the end of the day if he agrees or disagrees, if he's conservative or not, as long as he believes in the right of the people to exchange and express their different ideas. Well, I'm, uh, me, I have kind of have a different take on that just because for me, I look at who he's pissing off more so than anything. I'm looking at this yeah. whole entire ordeal like from a strategic standpoint. He's, of course, making the right people mad. But just think about this. He only has, or not he, more so the non-leftists that are more so persecuted on these different various forms of social media. They have everything, well, they have nothing to lose. Think about it. If Twitter continues the crap that they've been, which is basically narrative control, mm -hmm. by way of moderation is what they call it, we get the crap in of the stick. But we've already been getting that, right? Right. right. If it changes, and let's say it goes to either Twitter of way back in the gap where the, you could basically say whatever you wanted to on that platform, which sounds like that's the idea uh, of where we're going. If that happens, the left only has to lose in that regards. They have everything to lose because really what they have allowed these last, let's say, four or five years or so, they had been successfully, which I didn't think they could do, but they successfully were able to capture all these various forms of social media and use them basically as extension of the corporate press. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. So it was all about narrative control for them. I mean, we have a couple of stories that we're going to talk about later, which kind of talk about that as well, where they these these leftists get so bent out of shape that they can't actually maintain control of what people consider the righteous information. So the reason why we have Sean King, of course, right here saying his I'm blocked by Sean King. So this is my first time actually seeing this man. I'm having an exchange way, way back in the gap over him being a white man, something like that. But uh, either way, you can see <laughs> that he's freaking out. All of them are freaking out. Same yeah. type of stuff. Buzz terms referring to white supremacy and, yeah. and Nazism, because that's really what, you know, of course, Elon's going to have one rampant on this new How social media platform. How dare they talk about an African-American that way? How <laughs> dare they? But it, 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 it doesn't work out for them and it works out for us. And they know that, which is why they're utterly terrified and they're freaking out because where are they going to go? Right. They're going to go if they go to, I don't know, somewhere else, they're going to go to another platform that they already had control. They have only everything to lose with there being a pivot on this. That's why they're so terrified. In the, in the event that this goes in the, the different direction, which is what we can all hope for. So let's go through some of these tweets. Uh, Eric mentioned Sean King, who says, at its root, Elon Musk wanting to purchase Twitter is not about left versus right. It's about white power. The man was raised in apartheid by a white nationalist. He's upset that Twitter won't allow white nationalists to target and harass people. That's his definition of free speech. I don't recall seeing Elon Musk saying my definition of free speech is to allow white nationalists to harass people. I don't recall say, seeing that, uh, probably because it's not true. But um, let's, you know what, let's go to, I know Sean King went on a rant, but um, but let's go to, who is this? Yvette Nicole Brown. She has a check mark. Does anyone know who she is? Never heard of no. Don't know who she is. Uh, for those leaving Twitter after this Elon Musk deal with the devil goes through, make sure you download an archive of everything you've contributed to this space. You've had a good run, Twitter. 
Uh, Nikki Fink says, so if and when Elon Musk takes control of Twitter and turns it into a male malevolent mouthpiece, where should Democrats and progressives go for free speech on social what? media? An existing <laughs> site, or do we start our own? What? Oh, man, I'd love to see that. You just said free speech. Do you not? He, you're fine to stay. He's fine with you staying. Why yeah, do you need? He, he, he put out a that's tweet. That's the whole reason. He, said, he put out a tweet and he said, "Look, I hope even my biggest critics still remain on this uh, yes. on this platform." There it is. I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that is yeah. what free speech means. You absolute nincompoops. They, it's narrative control, guys. They, they are terrified of that. But it goes to show where all their power comes from. It's just perceived legitimacy. That's the only thing that they have. They know that. It's not like they have the brightest and best idea. Yep. Uh, they just appeal to the lowest common denominator, which happens to be so many different people because they're stupid. And they know if they see it. I mean, I know we don't maybe look at Twitter that way, but a lot of people look at Twitter like that's where they get their, their information from. So if they're able to moderate that to the point to where they're only seeing, it's not just through what's allowed on a platform. It's mm -hmm. also algorithmic. It's also the trending topics. That's all that stuff is fake. So the idea that that would change just makes them, they're just scared to death of that. He's so right about that, too, because a lot of people see the whole Twitter thing and they think that it's like a distraction from some bigger issue. But the way that they're melting down about this is very intentional, mm -hmm. because even like I think it was uh, who was it? The, the Saudi Saudi royal family had some comment about, you know, they wanted to buy stake in Twitter because they recognized it's I think they said uh, intrinsic value or something that couldn't be measured in dollars. That's so true, because the way that Twitter enables them to consolidate narrative control, like Eric said, is priceless. It's yeah. invaluable. Yeah. And for someone like Elon to just go in and, and put a price on it and to buy it is such an asset for free speech and for like basically getting the truth out there. Because mm -hmm. we often wonder, why is everything so backwards nowadays? The only way that you could convince a population, I think it's like what a majority of people agree that like a woman can have a penis now or something <laughs> last time the point. The only way that you could convince a population to believe something so backwards is to have a complete monopoly on the flow of information Absolutely. in this country. To where people are reading this on their screens, they're like, well, I guess this is what we believe now. I don't know if I really want to speak out against it. Because it's the same way that we've evolved to sort of outsource the default belief to like what the herd thinks so we don't get like killed. Now we do that through our screens that everyone is plugged into all um, like 16 hours a day. So it's only through their control of social media and through mainstream media that they're able to sort of manufacture these completely backwards narratives. And when they lose something as silly as like the bird app, you see them melt down on a global mm -hmm. scale because of it, because it does matter. Uh, let me, I, I want to give you one more, only because I feel like it will make Eric's head explode. Uh, this is a professor from Texas A&M University, what? Jennifer Mercies, uh, I hope I screwed that up, uh, says, when an oligarch buys a communication platform to distribute right-wing propaganda, that's not democracy. That's Eric. true. And that's uh, preferable uh, as, <laughs> as well, um, if we're talking about not a democracy. It just... It's been fascinating for me to watch these guys, I mean, pair at the same thing. But that reaction is something that people, be conservative, libertarian, whatever you are, that you should certainly pay attention to. Because I know often stuff that I talk about, I know John talks about as well. It's like, oh, well, we're kind of, they think we're the ones that are out of touch. Everybody cares about the other, definitely the, the real political stuff. That's all everybody cares about. And I'm like, definitely when you see these newer generations coming in, if you want to actually be able to have them hear where you're coming from to the point to where it's not like despised or it's not disgusted, then you have to have some sort of footprint in elements like the Twitter's versus mm -hmm. of the world. And when you don't, well, you get, I don't know, 20 percent of people believing that. Oh, no, 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 excuse me. A, a lot of people believe in that 20 percent of the country is transgendered. Mm. Yeah, John, I, I want to give you a last word on this. Uh, democracy is, is the key word. It's blah, 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 blah. Democracy is dying. It's basically uh, what they say about everything. Well, a very bright young man once said that democracy is cringe and people should read some <laughs> Aristotle. And what he meant by that is that, sure, like this idea that like everybody votes or everyone should have a say in things, that is an idea that is so distant from reality that to say it is almost like cringeworthy. Like, oh, you really believe that? That's kind of like weird. You must be retarded. <laughs> because it's true. And it's like... 
to the, <laughs> that's sort of the notion of the whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> but I continue. <laughs> the, the way democracy works in practice is basically you have the, the ruling class and the oligarchy, and they just own the, the flow of information. And so they'll brainwash the masses into believing something, and then they hold a vote on it, and then they call the outcome legitimate. And it's like, well, it's not legitimate. And that's why the biggest threat to democracy, which is said possessively, not collectively, when they say our democracy, mm -hmm. that means our democracy, not everyone's, mm -hmm. ours is simply for people to be able to talk about things. Like they're saying that Elon Musk is gonna be distributing like right-wing propaganda. You look at what he tweets, it's like doge memes. <laughs> it's the most surface level stuff basically saying, we should more or less have an equal playing field. And that in itself is so threatening to them because yep. if people are allowed to say basic things like there are two genders, you know, blah, 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 that like literally destroys their entire system. Yeah, uh, all right, we've got, we've got more to come, but uh, first we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So guys, uh, parallel economies are crucial in this day and age. We've got all these major corporations that are going woke. Uh, not only are they forcing their employees to go through all of these trainings with all of this leftist propaganda, but they're also taking a portion of your hard-earned money that you're sending in through your bills, and they are using it to donate to all of these left-leaning organizations that you spend your time fighting against. That is why you need to check out Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. It's 2022. They've got all the same uh, towers as all of the major carriers. It's, they all share the towers. So it's the same nationwide coverage, but you're going to get the peace of mind that your money is supporting free speech, life, and liberty. Patriot Mobile has plans to fit any budget. They've got 100% U.S.-based customer support, so you know you are going to get that exceptional support. Patriot Mobile shares your values and supports organizations that are doing things like fighting for religious freedom. They're fighting for the sanctity of life and for our veteran and first responder heroes. You got to go over to patriotmobile.com slash news. You can get free activation with the offer code news. By the way, if you are a veteran or first responder, you are going to save even more on top of their already reasonably priced plan. So you got to make sure to check them out. We got to stick together in this day and age. All right. We never know when the left is going to erase us all. You can stick together by going to patriotmobile.com slash news. That is patriotmobile.com slash news. So uh, over the, uh, the break, during the break, I just was reading that Donald Trump has said that he is not going to return to Twitter. He will be using his own social media platform, he said, which is, of course, Truth Social. He said, I'm not going on Twitter. I'm going to stay on Truth. I hope Elon buys Twitter because he'll make improvements to it. And he is a good man. But I am going to be staying on Truth, which is interesting because he I don't think He's tweeted on truth. He hasn't actually uh, well, tweeted. I don't think he has written any posts on truth as of right now. I think there was just one kind of random post that they used to set up his account. And everyone's been like, why is Donald Trump not sending any, any messages on this? So interesting development. You would have thought that he would have done it just solely to make the liberals very upset, knowing that he would just make their heads explode. I don't know what the end game there is. Definitely consider this truth that. social thing has been a complete disaster. Well, it's for been him. a disaster certainly because they haven't even really moved on getting people on that platform. There's folks still on this freaking uh, uh, prominent people, by the way, mm -hmm. that are still on this waiting list. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what the end game certainly is. Nonetheless, I, I mean, I respect it. You want to do your own thing, continue to do your own thing, but you know, not everybody is built, I guess, to have a, an effective let's say, social media platform. Yeah, it, well, and it was weird, too, because so they sent me a message ahead of time, and, you know, it was like, hey, we want to make sure you're on. We want to make sure you have your username uh, reserved and all this, and I thought it was going to be very seamless. And then, you know, it, they, it feels like they kind of fumbled it, and then they're like, you're going to be verified immediately, and I still don't have my verification and can't, can't get a response from anyone uh, as to, like, oh, why or when that's coming. But I'm like, you guys reached out to me ahead of time. <laughs> So, and then I know, as you pointed out, there are a lot of people who, one of our fellow hosts here, Steve Dace included, who are like, guys, I'm just, I'm sit, I'm like queued up as like number 15,000 in the waiting line uh, on the list. What's going on here? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of uh, Trump's ego and then investor yeah. money. Yeah. Like, the problem has been solved. I mean, it's even implicated in the title of this platform, Truth Social. Mm -hmm. It's going to be objective. It's going to be open. Anyone can say anything. Okay, well, Twitter is ostensibly going to have that back. 
well, we have all these investors now and we have Trump. So he wants to stay on there. And it's just like a ridiculous idea because the problem with you being taken off Twitter wasn't that your supporters couldn't reach you anymore. I mean, I've heard everything, whether it's the email lists or his statements on his website or on Truth Social or any of these others. And how many have we had? I mean, there was what, Parler? Uh, I have a lot of rumble, there's just all these other for videos and tweets, and they're all trying to recapture the magic of Twitter, which again, as someone who's been addicted to it since he was 14, there really is something to be said about Twitter, the way that the information can be spread and shared, and everyone's on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, is that you are being removed from the mainstream conversation. You can wave your finger and say, well, we're going to go start our own. That's fine, but that's going to be an echo chamber. You want to have representation and a presence within the mainstream conversation. And now that that is ostensibly going to be given back to you, you not wanting to participate because of ego or because of money being tied up somewhere else. Like, you really just need to swallow your pride and come back to Twitter, Donald. You had the best account in the history of the website, and it's stupid to want to abandon it. You, you're, so, hold on. So, John Doyle is coming out and saying Donald Trump had a better account than John Doyle. Oh, easily. Wow. Easily. I would say that I'm probably top 300. <laughs> But he, he's definitely the best. I mean, in terms of influence, the quality of the content, he's, mm -hmm. he's just the best account of all time. So it's actually a crime against humanity for him to not <laughs> want to return. He should actually Quite almost, I would support a sort of like coup forcing Trump at the barrel of a gun to go back to tweeting uh, on, on Twitter.com as opposed to on Truth Social. Yeah, insurrection, but for Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes total sense. I agree. Um, all right, let me, I want to go to uh, some news on Hunter Biden. So apparently, according to uh, some new emails that just surfaced, this is, okay, this is, it's, it all get, it's very convoluted, but I want you to understand as I'm trying to explain this whole dynamic and who's who, uh, I want you to remember that this is, in fact, the President of the United States family. So Hunter Biden had a, a brother. His name was Bo Biden. As we know, Bo Biden died. Bo Biden's widow shacked up with Hunter Biden uh, later on after that. And apparently, um, shortly, before, <laughs> shortly before Hunter Biden fathered a child with another woman, he pressured uh, his late older brother's widow to get an HIV test. This is Hallie Biden. And as I, I mentioned, she, this, they shacked up. And he said, you need to get tested for HIV, Hallie. And I say it like that because it's in all caps. He said, you need to inform me of the result today. I am getting tested today. I have been sick, scared, Hallie, and you hang up on me. The love you give is so disturbing. Uh, and Hunter, I guess, advised her to focus on her sobriety. This is all very, again, it's like, why... Are you paying attention to this? It seems like gossip, tabloid garbage, but it's like this, this is the caliber of the people who are related to the man in the White House. I would say making the decisions, but I don't believe he actually is. I don't. How I mean, sad is it that I do that? It's like, this is, a, this is, this is his family. It yeah. sounds like TMZ trash, but it's like, <laughs> this is. is actually his family. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of like, I don't know, man, politics is ugly. And I think there's a lot of like goofy stuff like that going on when you as like spell out a story like that. That's like off a movie or something like that. A bad one too. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, like yeah, a would, really bad one. It wouldn't be. Yeah, I think it maybe be a decent like drama for like I don't know a twelve episode. Uh, I don't know mini series or something. Hallmark like that. Channel. Uh, <laughs> Lifetime maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, it's. I guess the more interesting thing about all of this, going back to the original discussion, like what we're having with Twitter, is how so much of that stuff just goes. If we don't talk about it, it doesn't get discussed like at all, which I hate to be that. Uh, well, if the other side did it, well, yeah, because they would do it. And mm -hmm. of course, we've already seen what it is they do. So it, it, it just goes to show how much work, despite this Twitter stuff with Elon, how much work that we have to do in order to try to have an imprint on the main conversation because this is going over everybody else's head and you're right it, it is the son of who is seen as the most powerful man in the world at least in this country yeah i mean it's like and it's not just 
these emails in particular, but it's a lot of other emails oh, that have been stuff going swept on. under the rug. It's yeah. the business dealings in Ukraine and China. That's and perhaps more important. Yeah, well, right, I know, but that's not getting any coverage yeah. either, yeah. other than you know al uh, alternative outlets like ours. And it's just like this: these people are incredibly screwed up. It's not a coincidence that all of the people close to Joe Biden are this freaking screwed up. <laughs> it's not yeah. a coincidence. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting to the point where you almost have to like imagine the worst possible scenario in terms of these people's behavior and just assume that that's probably correct. Because even this stuff that comes out about Hunter Biden, I mean, that's still allowed to air on like Fox News. You have to wonder what tips they get and what information they get where even the top level at that point is like, okay, well, we can't actually air this. You have mm -hmm. to really wonder what's going on there. And you know, this, this type of petty gossip, Sarah, it really is of no interest to me. You know, I'm really not one to dabble in this sort of stuff. I think it's kind of a feminine trait to really care about gossip and a little petty behind hmm. the scenes thing. I just it really never been my, really? my cup of tea. Yeah, no, I've never really taken interest in it. But I guess when it's convenient to my politics, I, I'll, I'll talk about it. But uh, other than that, you know, it's really just not that interesting to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. So let me ask you guys this. The, the midterms happen, let's just assume that they are legit, and if they are legit, seems kind of like it's gonna be a bloodbath. Does Hunter Biden get his day? Does he get karma? No. Does anything happen to him? Is Joe Biden subpoenaed? Like, does anything, does anything happen? Hillary happen? Clinton? It's a great point. That's a great point, John. No, it's just not going to happen because the GOP doesn't exist to win battles or even fight battles. I mean, it exists to take money away from well-meaning patriots and then reward basically uh, people who are sympathetic to the opposition for occupying volume that should be used to fight back. Mm. So, like, they're allowed to exist because uh, they're taking money from people that should be spent actually fighting back and they're just padding their own pockets with it because if they actually were fighting back, the establishment, which is very good at preserving itself, would take them out, whether that's mm -hmm. take them out of office, allow for information to come out that would make it so they can't win re-election or something like that. So uh, as much as I would like to see something happen, it's just not going to happen because we don't have a class of statesmen who are actually willing to go to bat for the American people. Yeah. I just want, I, I want to know how I can get a copy of all of the emails that are available from Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. I know they, they're, they're like floating around. There should be a coffee table book. The, there, it there really, be. there should be, like I want to go through all of them. I want to see all of them, every single one of them. I would, I would, oh my gosh, I would go through Remember that in so 2016 fast. when we like literally caught top levels at the U.S. government uh, spirit cooking and doing those like satanic occult rituals? And it was just sort of like, ah, that's weird. And then we all just like went back to whatever we were doing. It, I mean, the, the, the crap that, yes, the crap that we're uncovering and it's just like, whoop, we're just going to sweep that under the rug. And, and the like excuse was, but it was like, it was like art. It was like performative. It was like a joke. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Oh, oh, that's right. Because the left. Uh, I feel better about it. Yeah, now. they joke all the time. Yeah. They, they love joking. It's their favorite thing to do. Uh, all right. We've got more to come, but uh, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back. Carmen Liu, who is a designer who is marketing what is called the first, quote, flattening and tucking underwear, uh, end quote, commercially available, has been accused of child abuse because, uh, turns out, this flattening and tucking underwear product is uh, marketed to boys as young as four. This is, uh, of course, flattening the side profile of the pelvic area is what it's supposed to do to hide any evidence of male genitalia. Uh, from people around the wearer, which I don't know what, like, I mean, who would be seeing the boys in just their underwear, um, but uh, this is a person who is a biological male who identifies as female, uh, a former ballet dancer who has now decided to branch out into the field of garments for people seeking to suppress and obfuscate their external sex Characteristics. By the way, uh, medical professionals have actually warned against these pieces of clothing as there is a danger of becoming permanently infertile due to their use uh, because of the excessive pressure it puts on the genital area to hide it from view. Um, by the way, this is not like, look, can we put this picture back up? It's not just that it just has sizes for children, this particular product, like it literally is marketed, it is geared directly towards kids. It has a special kids section as well. Um, guys, we... <laughs>
this is this is this is really I, I just, sick. Look, it just goes to show how far, just in the West, this conversation is gone. It's that incredible. people can see something like that, but it's like, yeah, we we feel some kind of way about it. However, it's still entered into the conversation like and people aren't ready to like bare knuckle box right. over it. Right. So it goes to show that they have gained a lot of ground in the fact that there's that, that immediate reaction because, mm-hmm. you know, used to be where it was a funnel. So it wouldn't even ever get to this point to where our eyes would ever see anything like that. Now it's like, yeah, because they control the conversation. And you bring up a great point and everybody that's critical of it, like, why on earth would someone that age anyway need to be doing all that? Well, I can tell you right now, they're going to try to spin it to, oh, well, they looking at themselves and not, I don't know, some freaking kid dealer, which, look, man, I know that there's going to be people that watch this show that say we're going to be unfair to the the, the alphabet um, spectrum. That's what I call them. And we're going to be unfair to them because, you know, the, the lines start to get blurred and we start to say that, that piece starts to stand for something else. Mm-hmm. But when we keep getting examples of that, y'all certainly ain't, I mean, doing what it is that y'all need to do to try to flatten, speaking of flatten that crap out to the point to where it's not associated with you. Why is it that we keep seeing all this goofy stuff? And in order for them to do it, they use as a front this LGBT whatever plus crap that they keep doing that. And it's tied to and it's last of your movement. So do something about it, or I'm just going to be, you're going to have to concede that maybe there is uh, some things wrong with y'all over there. Yeah, I mean, if you are if you are not willing to speak out against it, you certainly you're complicit in At it. At minimum, yeah. right? Yeah. They say it about us. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. No, it's their fault. All of the people who wanted to rationalize their own cowardice to be some sort of virtue, like, you know, I don't care about what people do in the privacy of their own home. Well, you should have, because mm. if you acknowledge that this is evil, you know that evil spreads like a cancer. It's like a fire. You have to actively suppress it. You have to actively make yourself uncomfortable, stand out with the unpopular opinion and say, no, this isn't okay. And you'll get hate for it, but that is what it takes, because if you allow it to propagate, this is inevitably what will happen. So all of the people who you thought you were so much smarter than who said it's going to lead to this, they're all right and they're all laughing at you, but you're all not laughing at where your country has gone because you didn't want to actually do what was necessary to suppress evil. And now you look at where we are and you look at the narratives that are being pushed concurrently. You have on the one hand the whole reason they are talking about you know child sexuality or whatever. It's the idea that child sexuality exists. So we have to talk about it. We have to talk about it in kindergarten. We have to give them these undergarments to change whatever. So that's the idea. Child sexuality does exist. And then the other idea is that, well, children actually uh, can consent. They know what gender they are. They can consent to hormones. They can consent to surgeries, all this other stuff. So what is the overlap between those two ideas? That child sexuality exists and children can consent. They intersect at something called pedophilia. These people are grooming your children because in a normal society, they would never even think these things. They might playfully, you know, I think I'm a girl, but they would be dismissed. The only way that a child would ever think that they are any sort of deviant sexuality or gender identity would be if someone is talking into their ear. The serpent is talking into their ear. That's why the whole idea of child consenting exists because children can't consent to anything. They're not smart enough. Their entire idea of the world is informed by their parents. And so when they say that they want to, oh, well, take your parents away from their kids and teach them through public education or whatever. All that means is we want to be the ones informing your child's understanding of the world instead of the parents because the parent wants what's best for the child and the public education system more or less works for Satan. So that's what this is all about. And it's like we laugh at that, but it's true. These people are possessed by demons, and I mean, that's why Baphomet, the demon in the Bible, it is a, a goat with breasts, and it's like these things are always androgynous. If you look at demons in the Bible, there's a reason for that. It is the complete inversion of reality, and if you are a Christian, this is what you believe, and this is what your Bible tells you is going to happen, that these people are going to try to make your children androgynous beings that are filled with despair because they reject the natural order as created by God. Did you guys see the, um, there was a tweet that was floating around that showed a comparison of uh, the amount of gender identity, identity child, clinics identity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for children in the United States in like the early 2000s it versus like now. Yeah, there was, it was virtually the none. Coast, of course. It was in the coast, of course. And now, and now it's they're just literally everywhere. All but see, over. this is like, uh, this is why it was always a gaslight when they acted as if when you called that stuff out or said we we're moving in that direction, they called you crazy. They called you a nut job. They said, how, no, there's no way that we would ever get to that moment. Or when you even suggested back in the gap, but like, I look at this public education system. It seems like y'all are pumping some filth into them because it has a lot of these young people believing this nonsense. It doesn't move into that direction. That comparison doesn't exist. 
if, if, if that isn't the case. So there's, it's not even worth arguing with them whether or not it's going. We know that it's going on at this point. It's like, what the hell are we going to do about it? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I just want to throw in here because it's just extra sick. Uh, there's an activity pack at this particular website, uh, an activity pack for sale for the children, which includes a story filled with puzzles, coloring in, learning, and two personal letters from Carmen herself to the young person and their supportive adult. Uh, and they have a tape measure as well, they say, to measure for the briefs. So. Nothing, nothing to see here, guys. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break and throw up, and then we're gonna come back with more. We'll be right back. Like, the, the craziest part to me is that YouTube has strict community guidelines over what we can and cannot say about COVID-19 vaccines and treatments. If YouTube deems we've somehow violated these guidelines, we risk YouTube cutting off our ability to communicate to you. With that said, the discussions which follow are not meant to provide medical advice. Please seek the advice of local health officials for any COVID-19 and or COVID vaccine related questions and concerns. <laughs> um, so you guys may be sitting here today and you may be thinking, like, we're pretty much done with COVID. No one's really talking about it much. Uh, the, of course, we talked about uh, last week how the transport, transportation mask mandate uh, was removed and immediately all the airlines were like, yeah, you guys don't need to wear this anymore. We've been waiting for this for a long time. And it feels a lot like COVID is over, but apparently not in Maryland because a Maryland Democrat official is actually threatening new mandates and virtual school if the residents in his county fail to increase. He's not saying like this rides on how many cases we have, how many hospitalizations we have, how many deaths we have. No, 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 no. He's saying that if they fail to increase the booster numbers for the vaccine, <laughs> that they may be forced to go back to virtual school. Uh, he tweeted out this as Mark Elrich, who is, the who is the county executive of Montgomery County. This is the most populous county in Maryland. And uh, he said being fully vaccinated at this point is not being completely protected for us to weather uh, future upticks and surges without mandates, virtual learning, or restrictions, we must increase our booster numbers. Find a vaccination site here. And he, of course, lists the link. It's just interesting because, again, the shot doesn't have an effect on case numbers either. So what, like, what is it are you looking for other than just to control the well, people and get them to okay. do what you want? So there's two things here. Uh, I think the first thing is the obvious thing that it has clearly been about. I think a lot of people have gotten off on the, the control that mm -hmm. they had been able to get because of COVID. I think a lot of these people maybe had uh, had wanted that and desired that definitely because it makes them feel like they're this virtuous, like, hey, look at me, I'm saving the people. I am doing what's best uh, with you guys in mind. I think the other half is the part where we all put our tenfold hats on, though we don't have to necessarily because a lot of the bills that uh, certainly were passed uh, do those stimulus packages. A lot of folks got their pockets lined up. And we just talked about, you just mentioned the airline companies, they were certainly among some of those. And if you don't think that there's like, I guess to kind of take a different <laughs> different angle on this, I'm more pissed off that these people are going to get away with this money laundering that they were able to do for a couple of years and may get away with it uh, even more so. But to that point, they will never concede anything. They, they still have a lot to gain, definitely as we enter in the fall again. And they're going to continue to perpetuate that. The thing that sucks, though, is what we should be looking at is the fact that all of these criminals, this is what they actually are, that participated in this sham, including the ones and especially the ones with the R's next to their name, are going to get away with it. Mm. It's like it never happened. It's funny, like we're, we're not at the COVID. Seems people have forgotten what these guys did all for what. Yeah. It's not like all, the, all they lied about it flat out. CDC flat out lied. They flat out got away with lying. And so much of their, be it with Fauci, be it with Rochelle Berlinski, a lot of the policies that were being not just not even advocated, they were actually being implemented all across the country were because of their individual words. 
and nothing's going to happen to them. It's like we forgot about it to a point to where these people are still going to go along with this, despite the trees that dollars that uh, that has been spent on this, all of the uh, the welfare statism that, that rose because of this, and they're going to get away with it. That that. It's freaking depressing. Well, not man. only that, but it's like Americans, a lot of Americans are so quick to just be really excited that the government is allowing they, them to do the things that they should have been they, allowed to do They look at it time. like they like, did them a favor. Oh, my God, thank you so much. It's yeah. like what we did out here with Abbott. Yeah. Abbott yeah. implements this stupid mandate, and then he doesn't do it. It's like people's like, that's people my cheer. governor. They're like, like wait a minute, what? He just did that to you. Exactly. It was him. Exactly. It's like uh, in Gladiator, you know, Maximus the Merciful, like the masses' ability to just always cheer for whoever they perceive to be like the good guy. You, just, you cannot underestimate how stupid people will be. <laughs> but in people like that, you know, who, who sent that message out, they're like good little foot soldiers for the regime because they'll try to project their own cynicism towards humanity onto everybody. It's like literally like, like FOMO. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's these people who would like to just sit inside all day getting Uber Eats and watching Netflix and being totally autonomous and isolated, but they don't want everyone else to be outside having fun without them because they hate normal people having fun. And so they have to then use this to sort of, oh, well, we all have to be safe and we all have to do online learning and we all have to you know, be vaccinated and boosted and all these other things that exist to depersona uh, depersonify, depersonify, whatever. Like that's what the masks were, you know? Yeah. Everyone was just like blending in and no one could see each other. And that has made probably children irreparably damaged in terms of their social development and that's going to really aid the regime in terms of like having everybody decentralized and deunified so that the only thing that could unify them is that strong central government. Yeah. Uh, well, when we talk about uh, specifically w the damage that it's done to children in schools, uh, it was interesting. I just read a, a poll. There's a new national poll out uh, that it's 18 to 29 year olds. So young Americans, uh, 46 percent of them agree with the statement that parents should have more control over their children's education than they do now. Only 23 percent disagreed. Obviously, their Republicans uh, far more supported the assertion than Democrats, but 64% of Republicans agreed. Uh, and let's see, 44% of independents agreed. 35% of Democrats agreed. But there were still far more Democrats who agreed uh, than disagreed independents as well. So it's interesting. It's like you push these people far enough you keep telling them that parents should not have control over what happens with their children. <clears throat> I think you, you're going to see the pendulum swing right back. Yeah, we already saw that. I mean, I think it, it, if nothing else, that's the silver lining of all of this, mm -hmm. especially with COVID and what they did mm -hmm. to these uh, these children and what they're doing with this whole uh, what's going on with Florida and how they talked about this bill. And yep. that was the line that so many people, even uh, people that were on the left, they drew. And because they crossed it, you're having people like they're in conflict with themselves. Like, I thought I was all about this, but this ain't where I'm, especially like older, like my mother and those types of guys, mm -hmm. Democrats, are like what the, this, this, this gender stuff, we're not about this at all. Yeah. So this is, this is interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Well, there is free speech on Twitter, or at least there should be shortly, which is really, really awesome. But that doesn't mean that uh, there's going to be free speech that extended to places like YouTube and other places where you may be watching the show right now. All of you people who are watching on YouTube right now, <laughs> you may, I don't know if you heard this or not, but um, we recently, uh, this show in particular, got into a little bit of trouble with YouTube and they lashed out at the Blaze TV account and because they were very mad that I happened to read a study about the amount of uh, miscarriages and, and pregnancy outcomes that were happening after people had taken the vaccine. I literally, I literally was reading from a study. That's all I was doing. They got very mad at us. So my point is, you don't know when this show is just going to be disappeared from YouTube. Twitter's great, okay? I'm really glad about the developments of Twitter, but we don't know. So what you need to make sure that you do is go over to wherever you got your audio podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review the show uh, so that you know that you will be able to find us in the event that we are disappeared from other places. You also may see a review read live on air like the one today from Chet Torp 
who gave five stars and says, it doesn't drive despondency. Love the show, doesn't create the existential dread that Glenn's show does. Aw. <laughs> Not only is Sarah great, but her guests are fantastic. This always provides new insight after a day of work. Look, we appreciate it. And obviously, Glenn Beck is, he is the man, the myth, the legend, and he is doing great work over there. But you know, sometimes you just don't want to jump off of a bridge. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't. And if you don't, you listen to this program or watch this program at the end of the day. So we appreciate the review. Make sure you guys keep them coming. Uh, Eric, make sure you are subscribed to him. It is Young Rippa 59 on YouTube. Make sure as well, John Doyle, Heck Off Kami, um, both amazing content you don't want to miss out on. So subscribe to them both.